Hey what's up guys, I'm going to be unboxing and setting up the Synology Disk Station DS220 Plus. This is a network attached storage, otherwise known as a NAS, that you install at home and it can take up to two hard drives. So without further ado, let's open this up and we'll go over the specs as we're doing this. So this one retails for 300 bucks in the US. This is the this station, obviously, nicely wrapped and everything. Let's open this up. It looks exactly like my DS214 Play that I got many, many years ago. So, it has two Ethernet ports for redundancy. It has a USB 3.0 in the back and one in the front and obviously the power supply and stuff so these are obviously the indicator lights and here's what I really like about this so the DS220J is also another really good option obviously the specs on this are a little bit better so this one has more RAM at 2 gigs versus the other one is at 512 megabytes and this one has a faster processor and stuff so this one's really designed for like 4k transcoding so if you're gonna stream stuff this would do a better job of that but the real reason that I really like this is of these slots that you could literally just pull these out it just makes it so much easier that because these things get dusty because I like I said I have the DS214 play I've had that for a very long time and you know it's it's nice I usually take them out and I blow it out and stuff and now we're gonna see what's in the rest of the box so power cable two cat 5 e cables so they support gigabit uh, screws and uh, AC to DC adapter and that's pretty much it so the way you install the drives and and this is basically just it's just it goes in with these rubber things it, it just kind of slides in and it stays put so it's very easy to take off and put back in obviously this one takes two drives so you pull this out you pull this part out and I got the obviously the SATA side comes out and you know if you try to put it in the other way the screw holes would not match up so you obviously pretty hard to put it the wrong way um, so you line up the holes and stuff and be careful not to touch like these parts of the hard drive so once you put that in you just slide this stuff in Make sure it snaps. Okay. So once you get the hard drive in, you just slide it in like this. And then when it clicks in, you're done. So now you would do the other one. I got the hard drives designed for a NAS. Do you need to get a hard drive designed for an S? No, you could just put in a regular hard drive in there. They basically, they're designed to last longer. They have better checking. It's just overall, they're like, think of them as like beefier versions of a hard drive. That's why they cost more. So naturally, like the NAS specific ones always cost more than just the regular ones. So you just slide it in. You can also tell it says Synology, like you, you can't even put it in the other way. And then you just push in and just wait for the click. So now you gotta power it on and connect the ethernet to your router or your switch. So open up a web browser and type in find.synology.com and it should find all the Synology drives that are hooked up to the same network. In my case, it's gonna find two of them so this is my older one, the DS214 Play, so this one's already set up. So this is the one that I want. So I'm going to click connect and then yes. 
and set up install the latest yep I understand so this is basically gonna erase everything and set everything up so make sure the hard drives are backed up I got two new drives so there's nothing on there so so be sure to pick a server name this is gonna show up on the network this is how you're gonna see it and pick a username and password then click next so this is Quick Connect and this allows client applications like your phone or some other device to connect to your Synology NAS drive via the internet without setting up port forwarding rules. I already have an account so I'm going to log in with this. Feel free to create an account to use this but you can also skip this step and enable this later on inside the Synology and when you go to control panel all you do is go to Quick Connect and enable Quick Connect and then you can set up your account from there. And this is what the link will look like when it's ready. Sure. Yeah, so Synology automatically updates. No thanks. Okay, so this is basically your statistics. This is like your profile and stuff. And, you know, you could restart and everything from here. I basically install a few things. So you could go to the package center and basically say yes. So they have a whole bunch of stuff in the package center. And if you click on install, it obviously tells you what's installed and whatnot. And you could you could basically update all. File station is very, very useful, and it's a good thing they installed it. Had they not, I would have installed it myself. But this basically shows you everything that you need to see. So in my case, because I have two brand new hard drives, I actually have to click and actually like create them. So I'm going to click on volume and then I'm going to click on create. I'm just going to click on custom, create a new storage pool, better performance. So RAID 1 is data mirroring. So basically whatever you copy here, it copies it to both hard drives. So if one hard drive fails, you still have the data. I'm just going to pick RAID 0. Now RAID 0 increases your performance and has no fault tolerance whatsoever. I'm going to get 10 terabytes plus 10 terabytes, so it's going to give me 20 terabytes essentially, or the fake 20 terabytes because the 10 terabytes really like 9 terabytes, so it's going to be like 18 something. The problem with this is if one of your hard drives breaks, you pretty much lost everything. So it's not the ideal solution, but because this is a backup of a backup, if this one fails, I still have my data elsewhere. So I'm not too worried about it. So that's why I'm picking RAID 0. But I would recommend most people pick RAID 1. So yeah, this is what I was talking about. It's 10 terabytes, but it's actually 9 terabytes because they wait, the way they count it is wrong. It's like a marketing gimmick and stuff. And this is basically saying, hey, we're going to set this up. You sure? And I'm like, yep. Leave it at the default. OK, so click Next. And this is going to set everything up and it's like, hey, are you sure? And you're like, yep, I'm sure. So again, RAID 0 is without data protection. So now I'm going to have 17.46 terabytes and this is going to be all usable. So and if you go to storage pool, this is where you see everything. You see the hard drives are healthy. This is information about the hard drives and their operating temperature and feel free to add more applications the few things that I recommend is media server which if you have like a DLNA device if you install this it could see this and it could basically uh, you could stream stuff from this and play videos on your TV or something like that and there's also something called cloud sync which I also recommend installing and I also you could you could put an antivirus on this. It's called antivirus essential. So feel free to search through all the packages. There's a whole bunch of things you can install and you know there's backup engines and other things like that that you could set up. So it it does a whole bunch of stuff. You can even set up your own SVN, you could set up your own git. I could just go to this link and it will actually go there. And if my login is saved, they'll log in. If it's not saved, they'll ask me to log in. Okay, so now that we have that all set up, if you go to File Station, you see the three folders that it comes with. 
Now, in order for me to access those from my computer, I could just go to Windows Explorer and type in backslash backslash and this IP address. And obviously the IP address will probably be different for you, but that's how you get to it. So now I have access to these three folders. So I can write stuff in here. So as an example, if I go to video and I wanted to put my YouTube video in here, I just copy it there and boom, it's done. And I just click on video and now it's here. I can share this with my other devices. Now I could stream this to my TV if I wanted to. Now if I wanted to make a new folder at the parent level, I would have to do it through Synology. So I'd have to go here and click on create new shared folder. And let's say I wanted to call it documents as an example. And feel free to check these options, whatever you want to do. So I basically do restrict access to administrators for the recycle bin and you can encrypt it. I don't want to encrypt it. And you can enable data checksum and stuff for data integrity. So I'm going to do that. You can enable file compression if you want to. And whatever you choose to do, just select your options and then it's like, okay, apply. And that's going to create a new parent level folder. So, and then I could say, hey, I don't want my guests to have no access to this. So only an admin can access this as an example. So now when I go here and press F5 to refresh this, it's actually going to show up here. And now you see it here. Now if I wanted to make a text document, let's just say ABC, and then type in, you know, one, two, three, and then save that inside file station. So now that's going to be here. And then I can open that and then it's going to show up. So there are a lot of things that you could do if you don't like that you can go ahead and delete that so if you go to your control panel you go to shared folder you know you go here you could click delete and then you could just delete that if you want you don't have to delete it you can modify settings if you click on so you would have to say yeah I understand then it's going to ask you for your password and then or you can edit that you can in encrypt that later on you can encrypt this shared folder so you can do a lot of things even later on and the last thing I wanted to show you guys just for basic setup is you can also map the network drive so let's say I wanted to map it to my P drive so I would type in 192.168.1.1 this alone won't work so if I try to map it to to that it's not gonna work it's gonna say hi I don't know what you're talking about that's because you actually have to put the server and then the share folder so if you put video now you could do that and so when I go to video I will actually see that hey what's up guys I'm gonna show you and that's the video so basically you could map a shared folder but you can't map the whole thing itself let me demonstrate what I mean by these things get dusty and I pop this out same style this is all dusty and it's beyond the dusty and my SD card and my USB is dusty and then the same type of thing what I do is I pull this out and then I just uh, use the MetroVac and then I just blow on this from a distance with the MetroVac. These hard drives, see these are, I have old hard drives in here. This is, because this one's limited on size as well. But this is a three terabyte drive. And you know, I didn't get, I just got this hard drive. It wasn't a NAS specific one or anything like that. And it's been fine for at least six years. So this is an old, this is actually a nine year old hard drive and it's been fine and it's been sitting in my NAS for many many years okay so I cleaned my DS214 play in about three to four minutes or so so you could see it's nice and clean I mean not insanely clean or anything like that but I'd say it got rid of 90 percent of the dust in all about three to four minutes so that's why I like this design and that's why I opted to get the DS220 plus and plus I also like Synology because I've had this for six years or so and it's been working great and this is the electric duster that I use to actually uh, clean this thing 
So there it is, folks. If you guys have any questions or comments, please let me know in the comment sections below. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button if you guys like new Tekken Tesla videos every single week.